Hello, I am Dr. Satish Gore. I am based in Pune in India, which is close to Mumbai. I have been asked to talk with you about minimally invasive spine surgery as an umbrella, which includes surgery from the posterior midline approach and surgery through the transforaminal approach. I have also been told that I should talk a little bit more about my system and why we should switch from the posterior midline approach to the transforaminal approach. What had changed? What necessitates this change in technology, in philosophy and instrumentation? As we know, most of our patients have been coming to us with complaint of pain. We have been diagnosing this pain based on the patient's history and relevant investigations in the form of X-rays, CT scans and myelograms in the past. With the advent of MRI scan, the situation has drastically changed and we have been able to diagnose the details of anatomical change which were, which were not seen very clearly before and which were not appreciated so very well in the past. Since we have the superfine images of the MRI now, it is possible to point out in millimeters what really had changed. This I think is one of the important changes which brings us to the basics of why we should change from posterior midline approach to the transforaminal approach. The second thing which has changed is understanding of pain. This understanding changed when we started operating our patients under local anesthesia. This local anesthesia use in surgery of the disc and spine is not a new fad or is not a new idea as such. This started way back in 1985-86 when traditional posterior midline surgeries were done under local anesthesia and it was found that there are only four important pain generators which are situated in the foramen. Since these pain generators which are namely the posterior annulus, the anterior epidural tissue, the facet capsule and the tissue around, occasionally the end plate and of course for the sciatica the inflamed mechanically compromised nerve which comes out of the foramen. All these pain generators are situated in the intervertebral foramen so the axis which was posterior midline change to the foramen. It should change to the foramen because then you are able to access these pain generators more easily and under local anesthesia. As we mentioned that the initial change was the advent of MRI and the second change was better understanding of the pain. Putting these two things together we found that majority of the failures in the past were based on wrong analysis of the patient's complaints and over reliance on the images to plan the treatment. Since we know that about 30% of the images do not match the symptoms or the symptoms are severe but the images are normal or the images are looking very bad but patient doesn't have any symptoms. Now we have a situation where we know the pain generators which we can access under local anesthesia. So it is but natural that we switch from traditional posterior midline approach which is under general anesthesia and which is very invasive to a transforaminal approach under local anesthesia where we started seeing the pain generators and planning the treatment. And the last but very important thing is all these pain generators are of a very tiny size. The area over which these pain generators are spread are in millimeters and therefore we are able to access these pain generators through a very small incision on the skin on the side of the back. This incision is generally enough to accommodate the cannula of my system which is 7.5 millimeters in outer diameter. Therefore, there are three main changes which we have to be aware 
वन इज एडवेंट ऑफ एम आर आई नंबर टू अ बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द पेन जनरेशन एंड नंबर थ्री द पेन जनरेटर्स ऑल ऑफ दैम आर इन द फोरम एंड दे आर इन अ वेरी टाइनी एरिया विच कैन बी एक्सेस थ्रू अ वेरी वेरी टाइनी इंसीजन विच कुड बी एज स्मॉल एज सेवन पॉइंट फाइव मिलीमीटर्स विच डज नॉट इवन नीड अ स्टिच नाउ नाइनटीन थर्टी फोर वॉज अ ईयर वेन ट्रेडिशनल सर्जरी फॉर द डिस्क स्टार्टेड दिस सर्जरी वॉज डन एज यू नो थ्रू अ पोस्टीरियर मिड लाइन अप्रोच इफ यू लुक एट दिस इमेज द सैक्रम एंड देन द एल फाइव देन द एल फोर एंड दिस सर्जरी वॉज डन बाई टेकिंग एन इंसीजन ओवर द मिड लाइन पोस्टीरियरली दिस वॉज डन एंड द जनरल एनेस्थेशिया एंड अ बिगर विंडो वॉज मेड इन दिस प्लेस द इंटर लमाइनर एरिया बाई डूइंग अ लेमिनेक्टमी एंड इन दोज डेज वी ऑल्सो यूज टू रिमूव द स्वाइनस प्रोसेसिस एंड मेक अ वाइड डी कॉम्प्रेशन वेर अ वाइड पोर्शन ऑफ दिस बोन वॉज रिमूव एट दीज लेवल्स इवन द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ द लेवल्स वॉज नॉट वेरी एक्यूरेट एंड द ओरिजिनल सर्जरी स्टार्टेड वेन वी स्टार्टेड गोइंग ट्रांस ड्यूरल आफ्टर कटिंग द ड्यूरल सैक गोइंग थ्रू द ड्यूरल सैक एंड एक्सेसिंग द डिस्क as it was realized that it was not necessary to cut the dural sac people started going around the dural sac and over a period of time it was found that most of the problems are situated in the foramen or away from the midline the access also became much more simpler in that form it became fenestration where only the soft tissue which was lying in the interlaminar area was removed without removal of much bone and we also realize that these structures are very important for stabilization of the spine the facet joints and uh, midline structures therefore an attempt was done to do this surgery by cutting less and by going through the interlaminar area and removing the ligamentum flavum and retracting the dural sac to access the disc and the root and to confirm that the root was decompressed very well with the introduction of dr destando system what happened is he refined this traditional surgery which was mainly cutting of the muscles erasing them from the lamina doing a laminectomy removal of the midline structures and retracting the dural sac and accessing the disc and the root in the foramen to a very refined system where a tube was put on the interlaminar area here and through this tube we could access the disc the tube also accommodated a scope because of the scope it was said that the eye instead of lying at the superficial level will go inside and will lie at the operative level in addition a light source was added and therefore we could have a better visualization of the structure and we were able to access the structure without much cutting and the tube also acted like a retractor but mind you this system does not include the various additions or various changes the paradigm changes which we had in spine surgery one it did not take into consideration the changes because of advent of mri number two there was no consideration to the pain generators which are in the foramen and number three there was no consideration to the fact that most of these pain generators are situated in a very tiny area there is one more thing recently we have realized that many times the pain is entirely because of inflammation or chemical changes around the nerve root or the disc these chemical changes do not really need a surgical access and we can simply put a needle in the foramen and inject steroid or anti inflammatory medicine and get rid of the pain now all these important advances are not integrated in the destando system The Stando system is a legacy system, which essentially refined the posterior midline axis, and it made it into a tube. Now, mind you, even if the tube is of more than twenty millimeters or less than twenty millimeters, it is still cutting the posterior midline structures. It is still cutting the muscles. It is still cutting the ligaments. And it is still cutting the stabilizing structures. many times even the facet or a part of the facet is disturbed or sacrificed and all this is just for access 
to the pain pain generators in the foramen all this cutting is not necessary all this cutting is entirely avoidable because whatever is being cut is not a part of the pain whatever is being cut is not relevant to the relief of the person it is only to make an access towards the pain generators so recently we have seen that this system is being called as a minimally invasive spine surgery and endoscopy now these terms are not acceptable and not relevant to the system number 1 it is minimally invasive by plain simple english in that initially the incision was this big and now it has become this big so a smaller incision according to this system is minimally invasive which is not really the real meaning of minimally invasive what we mean by minimally invasive is do whatever is absolutely necessary nothing less nothing more number 2 the endoscopy part of it as you can see is the endoscope lies outside the body inside the tube or inside the body through the tube and you are just improving the visualization because of the camera and the light source attached to the to the scope it is not true fully endoscopic system now our system gore system has certain very very different and very very important aspects or attributes which we must understand number 1 our system is entirely geared to go in the intervertebral foramen anatomical studies of the intervertebral foramen have been done and these studies tell us about the size which a foramen can accept at l12 d12 l1 right up to l5 s1 this anatomical study has told us that we can easily put a cannula a tube of the size of 7.5 to 8 mm inside the foramen without damaging any structure since we are operating the patient under local anesthesia there is no need to see the nerve because the patient himself is awake and aware and can tell you if you touch the nerve especially when the nerve is inflamed it also gives rise to severe pain number 2 is our instruments are also made in such a way that we are able to go to the basic mother trouble in case of disc problems the initial mother trouble in case of disc problems is a annular tear but as you know the casing of the disc which is the annulus is torn this tearing of the annulus as you are aware is from inside out in a degenerated disc this tear is from outside in in a traumatic tear when it is outside in it heals over a period of time because the disc has a blood supply over the outside two thirds of the disc the disc also as you know has a nerve supply on the outer third the disc inside has no nerve supply or blood supply so if you go inside the disc to tackle this degenerative annular tear which has started from inside and gone out allowing a fragment of the nucleus to go out it is much more physiological the entire surgery can be done without any stitches at the end and under local anesthesia and you are directly landing on the area which is where the pain generators are situated so you are really doing something which is absolutely necessary and with minimal invasion of tissues which are not relevant to the symptom generation in these patients so ours is a truly minimally invasive surgery but apart from that we call our surgery as stitchless surgery for the lumbar disc under local anesthesia anesthesia per se is not necessary and therefore there is a huge paradigm shift in selection of patients because as of today as you are aware most of the patients who are aged would have diabetes hypertension coronary problems tuberculosis asthma overweight etc etc all these medical comorbidities can be easily accessed all these medical comorbidities can be easily managed as we are not giving any anesthesia to the patient so a stitchless surgery and under local anesthesia are two main 
attributes which are very very different than posterior midline under general anesthesia and invasive type of surgery more differences which are put during our debates in scientific forums and in academic meetings as well as conferences are the posterior midline surgeon says that most of the patients in our countries come late for treatment this actually is a blame which comes to us back to us as surgeons patients as we are aware are very very scared of spine surgery we can say that they may be ready or they may be amenable to coronary artery bypass grafting surgery but not to a disc surgery why because the reputation of surgery through the posterior midline approach has been so bad and it has been associated with neurological deficit in few patients even though the number of people who have undergone surgery and landed up with deficit is not very high it is a problem for the patient for his whole lifetime after the surgery it is very scary to lose the function of your limb or bowel and bladder at the end of a surgery which was initially done for pain these complications in the form of neuro deficits neural injuries dural tears hematomas scarring of the tissue scarring of the nerve root failed back surgery have not changed at all after the advent of destandu method the complications have remained same in fact there are reports in the literature from people who use the destandu system saying that the complication rate has drastically gone down the only thing which has changed is the access related problems has gone down another problem with destandu system is when the tube was introduced by dr jean destandu it was said that this is a mobile tube where you insert it in the skin you insert it through the skin and then you rotate it in various axes so that you can access various tissues in different planes and on the other side this mobile nature of the tube itself is maximally invasive and i call it as a tent surgery where you have a small opening at the top at the skin and inside you are making a very big incision and you are making a very big cutting of the tissue so it is a tent surgery where the skin only is cut in a small way but all tissues inside are disturbed enough to cause denervation weakness scarring hematoma formation etc on this background if you compare our system we are not cutting any structure except the skin and then we are directly landing on the annulus our system has extreme precision it is done under local anesthesia so there is no chance of nerve injury because the patient doesn't allow you to touch the nerve there is no chance of dural injury because whenever we are working inside the disc the dura and your instrument the annulus is is in between so the annulus guards you against the injuries to the dura the complications in my brand of surgery the gore system have been only infections to start with but over a period of time in my hands in last 9 years there have been zero infections we have also integrated our system with newer modalities like laser radio frequency and various shavers drills and other equipment the recent addition to this equipment has been hand instruments which will now help us to go to the central canal and ultimately cover the area which is now thought to be not possible by the transpraminal route you may have to wait for a few moments or few months before all these new instruments are available and then i am sure you would be much more happy to promote our system and once and for all introduce something to the people which will make them more happy more satisfied and even the surgeons also would be more happy to take over this system in their day to day practice the last thing which i will say times have changed patients expectations have changed and we must stand up and say that okay we have offering which covers those expectations because we are intelligent people we have applied our mind for years together to this problem and we must overcome this problem of failed back surgery once and for all and make our patients happy and satisfied with the results of the surgery thank you very much bye bye